Okay, back on the video cast. Um, this is an, a picture of the NASDAQ composite on a 60-minute on a basis. You can see uh, how far we have come. Uh, let me draw the trend line. This is from the lows. This is from the lows of um, August um, August 7th after this hollow candle reversal on August 6th. And so we've come a long way from 43.21 all the way up to 46.10. So almost 300 points. So it's pretty obvious that we're going to pull back a little bit. Now how far do we pull back is the question. Um, my gut tells me just looking at some very uh, sharp new uh, observations we have a hollow candle reversal here uh, this was last Thursday exactly a week ago and uh, if we do drop I believe this level holds let's look at the let's look at the internals now keep in mind that a good portion of this drop came from the fact that Apple was down four percent now Apple being down four percent is not a normal occurrence however it's very healthy it can drop six percent I still believe the stock goes to its the 102 105 level when we cover uh, when we cover the the equity portion of this video cast I'll show you what I see again I'm neither bullish nor bearish on Apple I really don't give two hoots about Apple um, but at the same time from a stock perspective standpoint I believe that there's enough institutional support uh, to hold that stock up instead of just letting it go at this juncture in the market so let's take a look at the stochastics here very simple things I've shown this over and over again they've been very effective on a money-making perspective these are oversold position oversold conditions we are quite oversold here uh, and it also happens to coincide with um, with the lower Bollinger on the one hour chart that I gave a lot of credence to when I'm looking at things short term so you can see here clearly that uh, just showing you the previous times that it's bottom like this and let's see here so you can see okay so looking at this I expect a quick sharp bounce going into Friday my opinion and my information and all the stuff that I process in my head from a game theory analysis standpoint tells me that they are going to cut some sort of un uh, interim uh, peace agreement or some sort of cessation of hostilities or aggressive hostilities uh, between Russia and Ukraine I do not believe it's going to spread into a widespread European war where we get involved, which I do not think will happen. You have to understand the intricacies and the game theory aspects of why, even though Ukraine is important, it's not a vital national interest. I don't want to get into that right now. So, uh, so basically, I once that happens, we should have a sharp move up and uh, and complete this part of the cycle which tops give or take around September 8th and that particular week just my take let's take a look at um, let's take a look at the QQQs power shares okay um, and uh, this is uh, what you see here is very similar to what you see in the NASDAQ 100 okay uh, I believe the Apple events uh, on the 9th right so there you go 8 9 plus minus you know plus two days around that that's the week that's the week I think the market tops a bit um, so let me do a uh, quick thing here oversold 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 okay so see what happens every single time let's not try to uh, reinvent the wheel just looking at it in a very simplistic uh, uh, manner as to what I see happening on the short term so every single time these type of things have happened um, 
we have had uh, we have had a uh, quick bounce so basically trades between in my opinion between a hundred and uh, and 99 all right on a short-term basis we could uh, if we break below let's say 99 and uh, then we have much more room to follow I do believe once you put the Fibonacci retracement over this that we have lower numbers to print going into the middle of September and uh, going into and I believe that once we ramp up in September we could probably uh, close September on a, on a plus a uh, couple of percentage points up for the market and then comes October which I think is going to be very turbulent that's when we uh, wait for the big one so let's take a look at um, the fear indices RVX I covered this very broadly and currently what we are seeing here that it's overbought I'm looking at all in a 60 minute time frame here so keep in mind all right I try to update people my members free trial subscribers very very uh, on a very relevant timely basis during the day it's quite a lot of work but hey you know that's what I'm here for um, so what do I see here we got it we can let me get my drawing tool all right upper Bollinger is around 1766 probably get there tomorrow's you know tomorrow's open or you know it happens happens uh, sometime tomorrow um, lower end is 16.2 and that's when you see the you know that's basically when you see I, I think this happens by Friday generally a bullish uh, expiration weekly expiration um, I believe yes weekly expiration uh, monthly expiration is on the 19th so again the week that I believe is going to be somewhat weak both for expiration and for overall market is the next week and then we um, probably have a turn around Tuesday on the 16th and then we and we end the 19th on a strong note so just mark those dates So at this point we are uh, we are uh, getting to us at 18 level, uh, and that's the last time those you know it normally peaks around that level. So um, unless it breaks up, in which case we got uh, 19 on the horizon, and of course we have a gap here to fill on an extreme scenario at 20, uh, which means that the market would fall a couple hundred points fast. So this pattern symmetry will. Um, resolve itself however I believe first we pull back and then we have that slingshot effect in order for things to go higher in this case this is an uh, inverse correlation when the RVX goes higher the Russell 2000 and the IWM and the general small cap market and the overall market goes lower so I do expect the markets to go lower after uh, we um, you know after the RVX pulls back a little bit that means in a, you know the market first moves higher and then it pulls back and that's it so at this point we're pretty overbought on the RVX so uh, putting out um, any extreme shorts on the IWM or the RUT would not be um, a smart move in my opinion uh, we need to see this uh, pull back to with the 16 level or mid 16 is in order to put out those shorts again and as that pretty successfully done as you know these algorithms and HFT program must admit are extremely sneaky they uh, they uh, fool institutional traders uh, so um, and 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 again I try to read them as much as possible but the choppiness and the fake outs are just extreme and that's the sole reason why you know let's put it this way well, I didn't go hog wild on buying the puts yesterday even though I bought you know reasonable uh, lots it's still you know it, it 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 just you know it worked out great I just should have been there to buy a lot and hold on but you can't do that because of, of all the fake outs in the market uh, let's take a quick look at the VIX before time runs out Got 20 seconds VIX is the same story it's starting to get overbought it starts to get overbought around these levels around 95 here on the stochastic so a little bit more room to move um, so around 13 it gets overbought it's around 12.36 and again um, trading in between this you know band on the one hour basis so keep an eye 13 is important if it breaks over 13 we're gonna fall hard in the markets if it um, it generally tops around 13 and a half so that's what I'm looking at and the bottom remains the same around 11.66 so that's it
you know, just monitor it on your... On